everyone and welcome to the retro channel and today is something very different uh a ps5 repair this machine apparently doesn't read disc properly so um we're gonna crack this thing open see what's going on on the inside uh it is quite dusty so uh could just be that we have a dirty lens or something but before we rip the covers off let me just give you a quick example of what this thing is currently doing or not doing so if we just throw a game in it'll take the disc just fine but all we get is the little disc icon on the screen and the drive. Just makes a bunch of fun noises for about 30 seconds and then we get can't recognize disc. The same thing happens with a CD. What's interesting though is if I throw a DVD in here, it reads it perfectly fine and we can actually play the disc and there's no skipping or anything. So that is kind of odd. If it was a dirty laser, I would have expected all discs not to work, but it seems DVDs do, while audio CDs and Blu-rays do not. Now I suspect there's at least a separate laser to read Blu-ray discs and DVDs. I wonder if the Blu-ray disc laser also reads audio CDs. I wouldn't imagine so because they're very different wavelengths, but um, maybe that's a thing. So um, yeah, let's crack this thing open, see what's going on on the inside. This video is sponsored by PCBWay, who are currently running their seventh annual project design contest. Not only can you enter your own project designs to win great prizes, PCBWay can also handle all your PCB prototyping and assembly needs, CNC machining, 3D printing, and a whole lot more. So check out PCBWay today, and we thank them for sponsoring this video. Now, as this thing does have quite a lot of dust in it, we may as well take both covers off. So on this side with the PlayStation logo, we just lift up a little bit and slide it towards us. And the same thing for the other cover. So you want to lift it up on this corner away from all these ports and then slide it towards the ports. So lift here, slide back. So here's our optical drive, but in order to remove this thing, we actually need to remove this black shroud, which means the fan's got to come out, this little grill has got to come out, and all of these T8 Torx bits all have to come out. Let's start with the grill, and the easiest way to get this off is just to get a plastic spudger and this little notch down here near the fan. So there's a little gap in the case here. And if we just stick a plastic spudger in there, it should lift up and then we should be able to just pull this off. So let's start by removing the fan. This just has four T8 bits around the outside and these are security bits. So you need a T8 driver with a little hole in the middle. The two screws that go in here are the same, but these two are both different. So the longer one goes up here, shorter one down here. That will allow us to take this grill off, but we do still need to disconnect this fan, so we need to lift up this plastic cover here. I'm just going to use the old pry tool and just sort of come in on the side. And then just slowly lift this up. It's just stuck down by some kind of adhesive. And the easiest way to remove these connectors is just to grab all three wires and just pull upwards. And that should allow us to move this out of the way. Yeah. We can now also unplug these connectors. So same deal, you might just need to jewel them to the side a little bit. Just so they're unplugged, the cable itself can stay in there. Of course, there's gonna be a hidden screw under this warranty sticker, so that's also gonna to need to come off. I'm pretty sure this thing is already out of warranty, so we're not worried about messing that sticker up too much. Uh, maybe hot air could remove it without messing it up, but um, like I said, we are not worried about this one. So let's start with this guy. And it's pretty much the same deal. So find a screw, remove it. Uh, the only ones you want to leave in place right now are these four screws on the optical drive. Once you've removed all the screws, including this SSD cover, this black piece should just lift off. Now I've deliberately left all the screws in their screw holes because as you can hopefully see, a lot of those are all different lengths. So uh, I don't really want to get all these mixed up. So I'm just going to leave them in the plastic piece and just clean around it. We've almost got the optical drive out. All we need to do is disconnect it. So if you see this little silver tab here, you just want to push that back and then you should be able to pull this ribbon cable out. And with that done, this should just lift out. 
Now, I'm not going to go disassembling this any further. I'm just going to get a brush to remove some of the loose dust and uh, some compressed air to get it out of some of those crevices. But as my bench is already filling up with dust, I'll do the rest outside. Let's focus our attention on this drive. So there is a little bit of foil tape here, so we will need to sort of lift that off one end, just like so. And then we've got a bunch more Phillips head screws to remove, and we can now remove these four screws as well, which will actually drop the drive mechanism down into the bottom of this metal case. With all the screws removed, our cover should lift off. It feels like the drive is still stuck in this top cover, so I'm just going to use a Q-tip or something soft and just push down on this manual release button. And there we go. We've got a couple more cables to remove, so this one you can just pull up on this blue tab while holding the PCB down. Just sort of gently wiggle it side to side. And we've got this little one here, so once again we're just going to grab both wires and gently wiggle that out. There's also this little one over here, which once again has a little blue tab on it, so uh, we should be able to just gently wiggle that out. And then there's this main one here, which to get to we need to remove these two screws. With those two screws out, we can gently lift this up, flip it over, and this one has a little locking mechanism. So if you lift up on this little black piece of plastic here and tilt it up towards this white piece, it should flick open. Now I believe this chip here is married to the original PS5 console that it came from, so if you're replacing your optical drive, you want to make sure that you hold on to this original PCB that came with the console. Uh, if you swap out the whole thing, including this PCB, from another PS5, your optical drive is not going to work. And with everything disconnected, we can now lift this out and there's just four more Phillips head screws that need to come out. Uh, you don't need to worry about this one, however you do want to make sure that this is out of its little channel. With those four screws removed, this should all just lift straight off. And honestly, first impressions, everything looks pretty damn clean in here. I somehow doubt that we're just going to have a dirty lens. We'll give that a clean first, I'll do a partial reassembly, test this thing out, uh, but dare I say we're going to need to swap out the entire laser assembly. So I'm using a bit of 99% isopropyl alcohol on a little Q-tip here and we're just going to gently go over the top of this laser lens in a little circular motion. Just like so and with the other dry end I'm just going to dry this off. That is it. Let's throw this back together and give it another test, but uh, yeah, I really don't like our chances here. Right, I've reassembled the console enough to power it back on and it still seems to work, so that's a good sign. Uh, let's throw in that DVD, see if that still works, make sure we haven't made anything worse. So it's going to need to go upside down because the whole console is upside down at the moment. Yeah, our DVD still appears to work, so that's good. Let's go for a game disc. And once again, we get, can't recognize the disc, so um, we're still at the same place as where we started. I think we're going to have to replace that laser assembly. And we're back to where we were before. So what I do have here is a replacement laser assembly. Uh, I'll leave a link in the video description to where you can potentially find these. Um, this came with this PS5, so uh, the owner of this machine already bought this laser unit. Um, so hopefully it works. Uh, all we need to do is swap this part for this part. You may also be able to find places that sell this whole assembly with possibly even the top cover. Uh, but remember, like I said, you must keep the original PCB that goes with your PS5. Um, I guess the actual laser assembly is going to be cheaper, but um, obviously a little bit more fiddly because we need to get the old one out. I think we should be able to do this by just removing these two screws here, which cover up our worm gear. And then we can pull this rail outwards and slide our laser assembly off and replace it with the other one. So I'm just going to push this all the way to the rear. 
and you'll notice there's this sort of metal clip here. Uh, we need to release that. So I'm gonna come down being very careful of this flex cable and sort of push it downwards and towards the laser itself. There's probably a better way of doing that, but we got it out. With the clip out of the way, we can now slide this rail towards the front of the drive. It might take a little bit of convincing. Obviously, be very careful of this flex cable. And once we've got that far enough out, we should be able to just lift the laser assembly out of the unit. Now we just need to swap over the flex cable. So once again, we have a little locking bar that needs to lift up. Pull that out. Lift up the bar on our replacement. Stick that in. And that didn't go to plan. That's better. And the other thing we need off the original is this white piece here. That's what sits over the top of the worm gear. So you're gonna to need to take this off. It's just held in by one screw on the bottom. Just make sure you don't lose that little spring. And with that done, we should be good to go. So we'll reinsert our flex cable back under there. And on this is a little black plastic lip here that needs to go under this rail. So put it in this way first, and then it should drop down into place. We can now reinsert the other rail. So there's a little hole in the laser assembly that it should slide into. And that should go all the way towards the back and it should be pretty much flush with this little metal piece here. I think it sticks out just beyond it. And we just need to get this little clip back in. So this curved part here goes downwards. So it sits kind of like that. I think the easiest way to do this is to get the rear in first. So get that little flat piece under that bit of plastic there. Then we just need the straight part to go back underneath that other bit of plastic. And it should sort of lock into place. Everything should slide smoothly and we can now put this cover back over the worm gear. And before we put the top cover back on, we'll just give the lens a quick clean with some IPA. And a dry. Cool, I'll stick the rest back together and we'll give this thing another try. All right, that should be enough to give this thing another test. I'm not gonna go tightening all the screws just yet because then it definitely won't work. Uh, but let's see if it can now read a Blu-ray disc and a CD. Let's just go straight for a game. Oh. Drive just spun up, didn't do that before. Hey, hey. Good old sack boy. I don't want to copy it over. All right, I'm not going to sit around waiting for this thing to copy over. Uh, this isn't my PS5 and I don't think this person who owns it is particularly interested in playing sack boy. Um, so how do I stop this? I know I'm offline. Just like eject. Copy paused. How about copy stopped? Aha. Ah, I deleted something. All right, sack boy is good. Does a CD work? The PS5 can play CDs, right? They wouldn't have... Sony has officially confirmed that the PS5 does not support audio CDs or super audio CDs or DVD audio discs. You lazy c Well, never mind all I said about audio CDs not working because they were never gonna work.
Aside from that, the console now seems to work just fine. Um, so yeah, I'm going back to PlayStations that actually support audio CDs. This is way too modern for me. It is kind of interesting that just the Blu-ray laser part of this died though. Um, I'm sure Sony wouldn't be too upset by that given, you know, everyone's pushing digital downloads these days and well, they could easily say, hey, you know, these old things are so unreliable. I mean, how old is this console? Three, four years old? Ah, what do you expect? If you bought the digital download, you wouldn't have this issue. Um, yeah, screw that. I'll take my physical media any day. So um, yeah, I guess that's it for this one. Something a little bit different. I'll um, obviously throw the covers back on and tighten up the rest of the screws. I've already knocked the loose dust out of this thing, so no worries there. And um, yeah, it can go back to its owner and I can go back to my retro stuff. So um, thank you all for watching. A huge thanks to the people that support the channel on Patreon. If you want to do the same, links to that are in the video description. And um, you'll get ad-free early access and a whole bunch of other things. Um, but until next time, thank you all for watching. Bye. Screws, screws, screws. I gotta say, like, even though it was kind of annoying to get to, and given that it's a modern console, repairability is not too bad. At least you can get into the bloody thing fairly easily. I would have liked to do some more tests on this thing to find out exactly what's gone wrong with it. I imagine the, uh, the Blu-ray diode is just burnt out or something. But um, yeah, all these screws in this actual optical drive sort of prevent you from actually testing this without all the covers on. So I uh, guess that's not going to happen. So I guess there's not really much that can be done for this.